Welcome to the Buzz Loaders Podcast. Today we'll be discussing guns. <laughs> the wrap up. Listening to the Muzzle Loaders Podcast, the show where we talk about anything and everything black powder. How's it going, guys? It's Darren and Nate with the Muzzleloaders.com podcast. We're back and recording in the office for the first time Woo! in a long time. We haven't had an in office podcast for months. It's it been a minute. Like. Yeah. Um, but we're excited. We just finished up our Oregon muzzleloader hunt, and so we figured we would just uh, kind of recap that. Uh, there's a lot to recap and a lot to mentally and emotionally process about what happened during this muzzleloader season. So there could be some tears on this podcast. There could be some tears. There, <laughs> could, <laughs> there could be some laughter. Yeah, um, hopefully. Yeah, if if all goes well, this podcast will emotionally move you. Um, but Nate and I are going to just talk about the pot or talk about our hunt for the most part, and uh, you guys are welcome to listen in. Hopefully, you guys can share in our. Um, in our grief, in our joy, <laughs> and uh, in a lot of different ways it, with your season wrap-up, too. Because, honestly, I think Pennsylvania is one of the last seasons to go here. There's mm. not that many more. So, yeah. Um, so, let's get started here. Nate, what tag did we have this year? We had the Union County muzzleloader tag. Yes, yes. And uh, it's whitetail only. Mm -hmm. So, for a lot of you people around the country, whitetail is probably all you have. But here in Oregon, we have a ton of mule deer, and whitetail are scarce in many parts of the state. Um, but story. here in Oregon, or here in eastern Oregon, we have a few spots that have whitetail aplenty. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're fortunate enough to have a whitetail-only tag. It is a little frustrating, though, because there were several times throughout the season where we could have shot nice mule deer bucks, and, um, and unfortunately, we're not able to capitalize upon that. So Well, the whitetail just seemed to have been struggling the last five years anyway. Yeah. Just with blue tongue and different various diseases that super frustrating for us because we want our white tail population to be good. Yeah. So. It, yeah, because, I mean, white tail tastes way better than mule deer. I'd rather shoot a white tail every day of the year. Oh, yeah. Um, unless it's a really big, like a 200-inch mule deer. Then I don't I'd even probably, care. You'd, you'd still, no. Would you shoot a fork and horn white tail over a 200-inch mule I don't know if I'd deer. shoot a fork and horn, but, you know, like a <laughs> mature <laughs> three here in East Oregon, three point, you know, yeah. six point in other places. Yeah. yeah. If you shot oh, a three point, so is it a three point with eye guards? Or are you saying like a three point? Yeah, three with point eye with eye guards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's so a four eight point. point, eight point, whatever yeah. you want to say. I say, I think the <laughs> biggest buck I saw this year was an eight point. I saw a pretty decent eight point. I was actually talking to um, Dennis Papinaw, shout out. Uh, I think Papinaw. Oh my goodness. I feel horrible if I mispronounce his name. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dennis, if I mispronounced your name. Sounds um, right. But I just uh, I just chatted with him this past weekend, and we were recapping because he had the same tag that we did. Mm -hmm. uh, or he did not this year, but his son had the same tag, mm. and he was one of the few people that didn't draw the tag this year. Mm. Um, did his son fill his tag? His son did. His son shot a really nice uh, nice 10-point. I'll put a picture Oof. up on the screen for you guys that are that are watching on YouTube. Nice. But, yeah, I was like, man, what a nice buck. Um, yeah. I, I, that was bigger than any of the bucks I saw this year. I saw a nice 8-point, nice and tall. Um, but it was, it was kind of tough going. I saw a lot of does and, um, and I'll get into, we'll get into the nitty gritty of all that stuff here in a minute. But, um, I saw a nice eight point. You did. You saw more than a nice eight point. <laughs> nice eight point. <laughs> There's a little, little four, little, what is it called? Um, foreshadowing, foreshadowing, a little foreshadowing <laughs> for you guys of what's to come. Um, so what, uh, what guns did we use? We decided to do, make things a little challenge, more challenging for ourselves this year. Yes. Uh, I don't know what gun you used. I used the invest arm, uh, or the Gimmer Hawken, right? Yep. Yeah. Correct. The yeah. invest arm Gimmer Hawken. And then I used the traditions Kentucky rifle flintlock, yeah. um, for most of the both season. Both flintlocks. Yeah. yeah. Both of them were flintlocks for most of the season. I used that <laughs> for the last few days. I used the, uh, invest arm Bridger Hawken percussion just because, uh, we'll get into why. We, we'll get into we'll why. get into why. Oh, we'll get into why. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
needless to say, hunting with a flintlock was something that I think both of us underestimated. It was. Uh, I don't know that I underestimated it. I was. I definitely expected it to be ridiculously difficult, but um, at the same time, doable. Mm-hmm. And obviously, having never, I've hunted a ton with side lock percussion. Yeah, uh, that's where I started and where I've done most of my muzzleloader hunting with the majority of. Um, but I just kind of figured it would be the same yeah. only with the flint and some powder mm-hmm. and vastly underestimated <laughs> the weather. Yeah. As far as what a flintlock is capable of mm-hmm. without a cow's knee yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Know. Whatever you have to, I've heard some people put use beeswax and stuff, but and maybe cow's knee would, wouldn't even help well, with the adverse weather we had. Who it's knows? It's true because, well, I mean. Even just the, well, we'll get into it. We'll get into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting <laughs> We're the get, horse in front of the car, or the cart in front of the horse. Yes. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, so I was, I definitely underestimated it because after going to the range and shooting the Kentucky rifle and seeing how accurate it was, I was like, man, this is gonna be easy. easy. Yeah. I feel like I could take a hundred yard shot pretty easy with this <laughs> thing, you know? And, um, and for one, you know, I think there was e- even distribution, like the muzzleloader made it challenging, but also hunting whitetails in Oregon, especially with the Super rut, the way difficult. it was this year, it was like you're spot and stalking most of the time and they just end up just busting at a hundred yards and then they don't stop. They just keep going yeah. and you never see them again. So, um, it's just so tough to be quiet and, you know, we got lucky a couple of times and then got atrociously unlucky. Most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so let's go ahead and start getting into some of the hunting stuff. So I um, I am in school a lot of the time now. And so I was able to spend quite a bit of time hunting this year. And I would do my school out in the woods or, you know, whatever. And uh, I hunted probably a, so it was a 14 day season. I think I probably hunted 11 days, not all full days. I hunted probably six full days Mm -hmm. but 11 days I was out at least and I saw deer pretty much every single day but the amount of times that I had an opportunity to shoot a deer was very very minimum you know I I think bamboozled yeah let's let's recap our day one because I think um like and I guess for you maybe not your actual day one because we spent that just wandering around aimlessly Mm -hmm. outside of town here Um, but your, your, your actual day one, because my day one, I spent most of the day out, um, out in Catherine Creek and I saw a ton. I saw three nice mule deer bucks that I could have killed. I could, I saw four of them. I could have killed three of them if I wanted to, Mm -hmm. if I had a tag, I saw the videos. Yeah. Yep. I had video proof of them. Um, but the, I ended up seeing three, three white tails as well. Saw two does and a nice eight point buck. Um, and the buck was, I, I could just see his head and I saw him before he saw me, which is a miracle. It is a miracle. It never happens with the white tail, but, um, <laughs> yeah, but it was opening day. So they probably weren't as, as keen in on it yet, but I saw him at, at 70 yards and I got to a tree and I kind of like aimed and I was like, Oh my goodness. Like I could just see his head and neck. And I was like, man, I just don't think this is a shot I should take, you know? So I didn't take the shot. I decided he was on the other side of a fence from me. So I walked back the fence to a place where it had gone, like it had fallen down. I crossed the fence and then was just hiking so quietly. Like it was like an angelic whisper, how, how quietly I was walking through the woods. And I got to about the same distance that I was before and um, because I was at a different angle, I, st- I couldn't see them. And mm-hmm. they ended up busting out and just were gone. And gone. I ended up circling around and trying to come in on them. And they weren't there. There ended up being whitetail in that spot every single day that I hunted there. But it's just so hard to get close to them, you know, because it's, it's pretty wide open. It's there, yeah. open. And, yeah, because we, we went through there. And yeah. it's open and there's just, they can see you from a million miles away. And it's mm-hmm. kind of tough to be quiet because the ground is just crazy noisy. There's a reason that they're hanging out in oh, there, yeah. you know. Yep. Um, and then Nate and I hunted together that afternoon for like two hours outside of town. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was a fruitless venture, but (laughs) it's not true. We got some good exercise. We did. We got some good exercise, some good bonding time. But, um, so what was your day one like, Nate? I don't even remember. I did. I slept since then. (laughs) Was your day one when you and I went out on that Saturday? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was your first full day. Yeah. Right outside of town was the first time we went. 
was the first time. Oh, I that's went. right. We went outside of yeah. town there. And then that, that, that following Saturday, we went out to the Catherine Creek spot. And yep. And that would be my first full day and we as saw well. Jack. Was fruitless. Yep. Yeah. Saw a doe. Saw a doe. Or two. Yeah, we saw two does in that same spot where I saw the eight point yeah. on opening day. Yeah. Um, and then we saw mule deer. Yes. But that's, yeah. The lock a shot. Yeah, yeah, lots of mule deer in there. Yeah. <laughs> if I ever get a mule deer tag, I know where I'm going. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll maybe we'll fast forward a little bit to yep. when Back. action actually got to happening. So we ended yep. up having a customer that comes into our store uh, quite frequently. Um, and he'd asked if I had gotten anything yet. And we are obviously had zero luck at this point. <laughs> and uh, he owns a little chunk of property right outside of Cove. And he said, well, you can come on to my property. I've seen Whitetail there every single day. And I got pictures and he's had some really nice pictures of, mm-hmm. of mule deer on there that <laughs> probably one of the biggest mule deer i've seen in i showed you the picture right? yeah 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 gotta be pushing 200 stupid big yeah or bigger um had a really nice 10 point on his camera on his property white nice, tail now. yeah white tail yeah really nice 10 point really nice or five point however you want to say it we'll, we'll say we're north we're northwest people <laughs> yeah so let's yeah. let's from five by forward, five if it's a mule deer we'll use the northwest standard <laughs> if it's a white tail we'll use like okay, the, okay. the nation yeah, that standard. sounds good eh, is that the nation standard <laughs> I think for, both, for most people that hunt white tails it's <clears throat> okay the, okay yeah. so had a really nice 10 point on yeah. his camera a really nice eight point and a really nice six point mm-hmm. <clears throat> so pretty optimistic that we were going to see something in there and he was nice enough to give us permission so it was really nice of him uh, you know not a lot of people would do that especially people that hunt like he mm-hmm. does so you know he's a whitetail hunter too he didn't have a tag this year but <clears throat> so we went up there just really slowly snuck into that spot and uh, set up did some raking some grunting uh, pretty pretty quiet and then all of a sudden uh, my dad was there with me and, and he was like psst, psst, psst. trying to get my attention. I look over at him. <laughs> what? He's pointing behind him and he, he's just behind a tree like this wide and he's trying to keep narrow. It's <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> so like, oh, there must be a deer coming up behind him, you know? Uh, and what are you of, thinking? What are you thinking at this point? Well, that's like where I was going. So kind of my mind went, well, I'm not going to shoot past him yeah. as the deer comes up and over so i'm gonna have to go towards him yeah so that i can shoot beyond him because mm-hmm. i'm not gonna shoot towards my dad obviously or people you know that would be unsafe that for would those be of unsafe <laughs> <laughs> very unsafe <clears throat> so i get up kind of slowly and start walking towards him trying to keep that tree in between him and i um and i start walking towards him and all of a sudden this deer just like shoots out of nowhere or as my dad would say, come squirting out. <laughs> <laughs> come, come squirting out of there. <clears throat> yeah. Um, if you've seen any of the other podcasts, you understand that joke. <laughs> if you haven't, go back and watch them. Yeah. <laughs> Berlin so, podcasts will be linked in the description. And, and the that's right. Above. Yeah. <laughs> Squirt now. <laughs> uh, so uh, my dad kind of cracks the antlers together. And at this point, the deers run up about. 70 yards away maybe 80 mm-hmm. and i'm pretty confident in where i've got this flintlock shooting and everything and as long as it goes off yeah uh, and he just stops broadside wide open shot so i pull back the hammer pull up boom you know powder smoke everywhere <laughs> um and he just does one of those buckle like jump you know where yeah. you know oh that was a good shot yep or felt like good shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad's high fiving me, and everybody's excited, and we're all just jacked. And you know, he he said from his angle, he saw exactly where it hit the deer. Mm-hmm. He said, "Man, that's a hard shot all day long. Yeah. Good to go. Like he's dead. Yeah, yep, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> the, the and, and I look at him. I look at him, and I'm like. <sighs> I don't know, man. I've been doing this round ball thing for a lot longer than I've done in line. And uh-huh. I've seen crazy stuff when you're shooting a round ball. I mean, they just don't, you guys that shoot side locks and traditional round ball and patch, um, know that there's just no expansion, you know, it just, 
yeah that ball kind of gets a little flat on the front and that's about it i mean it makes a hole in and a hole out if you don't get a perfect shot it's not happening Mm -hmm. so i'm less optimistic i'm like eh he didn't go down you know Mm -hmm. and and i saw him running off holding one leg up yeah Yeah. and all just three legs running away i'm like "Ah." i'm less optimistic and uh you know they're both just like oh no that's it's over Mm -hmm. so we follow him and find two specks of blood and can't follow tracks i mean white tail are i don't know they're ridiculously smart they're they snow fly. yeah they fly yeah they, just, they, have, they disappear in the they ground they have the ability to teleport <laughs> yeah when they talk about reindeer you know i think it's actually white tail that yeah because uh, there's snow all over the place but you yeah. go we went all around in the snow there was not a single track of where this deer went mm-hmm. you know we found a couple specks of blood and that was it and then, like I said, there's snow all the way, basically circling us, mm-hmm. and it's kind of patchy. So unless he was just stepping literally in, in the, the dry patches, patches yeah, <laughs> which it seems like that's what he was doing because we mm-hmm. just couldn't find anything, no tracks, no nothing, no way to to track him after that. So yeah, we went up there for the next, you know, I think we spent two more days up there, and we looked, you know, we made circles, we zigged we zagged you and i went up you and i back covered way. that ground a lot yeah, yeah and then just nothing no yeah. birds no nothing i mean assuming that it's probably non-lethal and he's gonna live on his life as a three-legged deer unfortunately yeah. <laughs> but anyway it was a really nice buck a bit really sad you know this is where the tear part comes in yeah <laughs> <laughs> one of the tear parts yeah 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 exactly one of yeah one of many tear parts yeah, from this yeah. season so that was uh you know really nice really nice eight point mm-hmm. um, and then we went around looked for him some more could have shot a doe at 25 yards but you know it's unethical i feel like to shoot multiple animals in one day mm-hmm. so yeah it's like yeah not happening i already shot my buck as far as I'm concerned, my season's over. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was a huge, huge bummer. I think everybody can kind of relate to the, you know, that sense of elation and that mm-hmm. sense of just, oh my God. Your heart just yeah, sinks. It's like, bleh, 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 it's the worst. You yeah. know, and honestly, since that time, I've been having a lot of dreams that that is <laughs> like an actual, like in my sleep, so, I'm dreaming about white tail nightmares. Things. Yeah, seriously. Like, <laughs> I've had several dreams since Sunday season. Nightmares. About whitetail, it's just like ah, so it's such a frustrating thing. It makes a lasting mm. impact, you know. But it's so fun. It's it is. such a good hunt. I mean, I I don't really enjoy. I don't know. I was gonna say I don't really enjoy anything more than I do whitetail hunting, but obviously elk hunting archery is yeah, it <laughs> takes the cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so action packed. But it whitetail is. is definitely a close second. Whitetail hunting with a with a muzzleloader, especially, um, is just so difficult it's so hard buddy <laughs> i do. had a white tail center fire tag in idaho too and do you see any white tail <laughs> pictures anywhere on instagram or no, no. that's true it's true but that's also idaho idaho itself presents its own challenges that make it difficult you know yeah 700 times more white tail but <laughs> you gotta find them yeah where the heck are they yeah um but uh yeah and then so kind of i guess from that point a rewind a little bit to uh, something that happened during my season. This is one of the times that I was hunting alone and Nate had kind of clued me in to a spot that might have some white tails in it. Cause we have another customer that's come in the store and mm-hmm. given, you know, given us some good information. And, um, so we went and checked that out and I went, I went and checked it out by myself. Cause this was a day that I was hunting where Nate couldn't hunt. And I decided to go in the back way, drive in like, five six seven eight miles park and then hike in three miles to go to a spot that was literally like a 200 yard walk if i'd gone in a different way he's just looking for some exercise (laughs) let's do this the hard way um but i i hiked in all that way and i kind of it's basically for those of you watching the video it's like a it's like a hillside all along the the back edge where i was trying to get to and it's like rolling fingers and up each one of these fingers there's white tail that hang out and then all, all along the bottom there's this like this like it's red red type brush i don't know what it's actually called but nate calls it buck brush buck so that's kind of yeah. what i started calling it anytime i see that stuff i'm like oh there's probably white tails in here yeah they love that kind of stuff that's why we call it buck brush buck brush <laughs> and so i'm like ooh, this 
looks good. So I'm like trying to, basically I'm trying to sneak down again, walking just ghostly quiet. And I'm trying to sneak down the face of this ridge. And so I can get to a spot where I can rattle effectively and get them to come out of this buck brush. And as I'm just walking down, they must have seen me. It's the only way they could have known I was there. And then an, a nice buck, another eight point, and a doe bust out of there and they're gone, like out of there. So I'm like, well, I may as well just sit here and rattle for a little bit. So I sat down and started rattling. And then out just out of nowhere, a doe just starts walking along um, around the, the edge of the finger that is directly across from me. And these fingers aren't very far apart. So I'm like, man, this doe is right there. But I, it was, she was walking and not really stopping. So I didn't have time to range it or anything. I was like, this is, I'm guessing she's probably like somewhere between 70 and a hundred yards away. So I'm just kind of like, well, I'm going to hold on her, you know, cause, uh, and I didn't have a good rest cause she's kind of moving. And so I'm just kind of following her and she stops to de- to go and take a bite of some food. And I'm like, okay, this is my chance. I've got to make this happen right now. Cause she's going to move. And I'm not, and this is like the last little opening I had. She's going to move. She's going to be out of range. I'm not going to be able to take the shot again. So mm-hmm. I, take the shot and I don't know if it was just cold or what was happening but I mean it was like and it was like it was like a solid second and a half at least of just like burn time in there and I was like oh my goodness and I'm certain that I flinched and of course she flags and just kind of wanders over there and looks at looks at me and is waiting there watching me reload I felt like I felt like Steve Rennell. I was like, <laughs> was like trying to reload and all these, these deers are sitting there watching me reload. And then she kind of goes away and I'm like, oh, this is stupid. This is dumb. <laughs> and so I reload and I go and I spend the whole rest of the day just combing this area. See if you'd had a Cedar Creek reloader with you, had been, <laughs> been done and ready it's and true. shot again. So. That's true. <laughs> if I had had any speed loader at yeah, all, yeah. I did it the hard way yeah, where I had to measure way. my powder out, yeah. pour it down. I don't know why. I'm such a fool. Why did I not bring a speed loader? <laughs> I don't know. I, I work at muzzleloaders.com <laughs> and there's like a million speed loaders Everywhere. out in the warehouse yeah. <laughs> and i could have taken any number of them with me and made my life much better yeah yeah um we don't think about those things like ah, oh, yeah i'm just gonna want yeah. and done it <laughs> yeah it's like ah oh, one shot's all i need you, know? <laughs> you always i feel like speed I, loaders are for wimps seriously yeah i feel like <laughs> whitetail hunting muzzle loader spot and stock specifically is extremely humbling like you mm-hmm. go into it thinking man i got an accurate muzzle loader i know where the deer are probably going to be and I'm just gonna go in there and kill one, and it's just not that simple with no. white tail, especially spot and stock, because you're just they're so aware. Yeah, seeing the deer is not the hard part. You can find them; they are around, but it's just getting to where you can shoot one that is just the nightmare of it all. You know? Did and you get that video I sent you the other day with the deer in the background? The one that whoop! Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's exactly <laughs> like that. So for those of you guys listening, Nate, Nate and I send each other stuff on Instagram all the time. Oh, yeah. And, um, usually hunting related. Usually hunting related. And uh, he sent me a video the other day of the guy. So basically, I, he was it, it was filming a hunter on a, on a distant ridge through a phone scope. Mm-hmm. And the hunter turns around to, like, glass the, you know, the ravine. And then maybe 20 yards behind him, a deer like jumps up in the end of view and then like goes into the brush and the hunter turns around and keeps walking. Yeah. <laughs> he just never even knew it. <laughs> and yeah. And How I, often does that happen? A lot because yeah. I could actually, when Nate and I were hunting the first Saturday together, we were walking and we were kind of on a mission to get to a specific spot. Um, and I kind of just brought my head up and a, a deer, it was a, it was a mule deer, so it didn't really affect our hunt at all, but a mule deer like literally jumps out maybe 10 yards oh, yeah. in front of Nate and he and I get up to him I'm like did you see that mule deer he's like no I had no idea like, was what there. deer they're just so yeah elusive yeah. you know yeah it's crazy and you can't hardly hear them you know yeah. you oh, have no. to see them yeah. and they're tough to see but yeah it's just it's humbling you know if and I think that that's that's good you know you mm-hmm. need to be humbled yeah. every once in a while to be like absolutely but I I guarantee you I'm going to go into next season with the same cockiness <laughs> yes season. you have to <laughs> that's what helps you be successful exactly you have to th- you have to know that you're going to be successful yeah despite the fact that you might not be successful not being successful <laughs> you know yeah is hunting is one of those things and I'm kind of quoting a, a a Instagram thing that I saw but uh it's it, it hunting requires you to give it all you have, mm. give it your best effort, and then in return, it guarantees you absolutely nothing. It guarantees yep. you that you have a good a time in the woods, which yeah. is not nothing, but guarantees you no success. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to give a hundred percent effort, and it guarantees you no success in return. Yep. Yep. Um, but this year has also just been kind of a crazy year for hunting. 
Like, <sighs> I mean, it's just been like kind of, kind of wild. It, it's hurt. It's hurt yeah. my pride. <laughs> it's hurt my, yeah. I think Nate, my freezer. I think Nate's been humbled more than, more oh, than he yes. Is yeah. The Lord is trying to teach me something. <laughs> I don't know what it is yet, but yeah, it's, but I mean, it's just one of those years. I'm just, I'm just confident hundred percent that next year is going to be a tag out year. Every tag I get, I'm going to tag out hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. yeah. <laughs> they call me 007. Yep. <laughs> zero deer, zero deer killed, <laughs> zero deer seen, seven, seven vacation days. burned. Yeah. <laughs> seven days of vacation burned. Yeah. Only I, it's been more than that because I yeah. had three tags. I had two white tail tags and an elk tag, and I got nothing. Yep. That's tough, though. I mean, you had, you had a good time. I do plan on putting in for uh, Idaho muzzleloader elk tag next year. So. I was thinking about doing the same thing because I'm already going to have a license because I'm planning to do a wolf hunt next mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, I may as well put in. You should in for put in for tag. the same one that. That one your dad always talks Mm -hmm. about? Yeah. Yeah. That would be such a sweet tag to have. Everybody I've talked to is just like, oh, it's too easy. I'm like, perfect. (laughs) (laughs) I've heard that so many times. And shoot a, you know, it's too easy to shoot a 300-inch bull every single day. Yeah. And the guy that, the last guy that we talked to that said, I said, yeah, it's way too easy to shoot a 300-inch bull every single day. I shot a 360, and I was looking for a 380. Yeah, that's I, I've I've heard all the I've heard all the promises in the world. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a hard tag guaranteed. to get too, but yeah, it is a tough tag. But and they don't have a it's a lottery system there. They don't have any points. So, so for you guys listening, there's a tag in Idaho where um, it's Shh, a mu- don't tell them which one it is. <laughs> I'm not telling you. There's a it's, there's a muzzleloader tag that's in the rut, and yeah. so it gives you that additional a little bit more range. You know, with a muzzleloader with an inline, you know, even Northwest legal, you could probably take 150 you know, yard shot pretty comfortably. You could maybe stretch it out further if you really just want to get after it. But 150 is with a ton of practice, a ton of practice and Magnum, like the, you'd have to really load it heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, the tough thing you run into with Northwest legal is by the time you, there's a really fine line between where you load it, you're loading it too heavy and the musket caps not able to effectively mm-hmm. ignite it all. So you'd have to load it heavy. Um, well, but, and optics too. You don't get any optics. You so don't. That's why 150, 200 is uh, 200. You know, you're relying on your eyesight. Yeah, and yeah. a tiny little whatever. If you're using a s- standard front sight yeah. with a rear V, or if you're using a globe sight, even the globe sights with the little crosshairs. Those crosshairs get so mm-hmm. hard to see at that distance, and yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I feel like 100 yards is just yeah. is just you know yeah. cash in the bank, but. Yeah. The anything further than that is attainable, but with practice. And but with that being said, during the rut, usually you'd hunt with a bow, where your range is usually going to be right around fifty yards, and you could probably stretch it out to further. 50, yeah. yeah, ten to fifty. And with so that gives you like twice as much um, distance that you can cover mm-hmm. with a muzzleloader, and mm-hmm. so it just kind of makes it a lot easier. There's another tag like that, and there's tags like that in other states too. I think yeah. Colorado has one, but all of them are like a lottery system. Mm-hmm. Which makes them kind of tough to draw, but um, I do want to do one of those hunts, so yeah. I think I might yeah. may as well put we in. We should put in for that together. Be we fun. Should. We should. Maybe the company will pay for it. Maybe, maybe, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nate's my boss, so uh, <laughs> whatever he says goes. Um, so. We'll just put it on our expense report and That's see right. if it gets covered. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> see what Jeff has to say about That's that. Right. Um, so we we still have more just to discuss about about whitetail season though because we haven't even made it to our last day which was probably the most adventurous oh, yeah. of them all yeah. um so nate and i decided f- so this is so nate this is the last weekend nate um took that shot on the 10 point on f- sat friday eight point eight point yeah. eight point on friday um right that was friday yeah okay so that was on friday and then saturday he and his dad went out and looked for looked for it all you know for at least half the day and then i went to another area and spent the whole day out there and both of us were just it was completely unfruitful mm-hmm. um and then so nate and i are like well I'll say completely unfruitful uh, yes <laughs> unfruitful it, in in the fact that we were not successful in yeah. the goals that we had set out to yeah. achieve yeah. um because and when i say that no day spent in the woods is unfruitful. Exactly. It's a great time to be out in the woods and, you know, you're getting exercise, you're getting adventure, you're getting just, you know, you, it's just good to be out in the woods. By unfruitful, I always mean unfruitful in attaining the goals that you set out to attain. Yeah. There um, you go. So when Nate and I got together on, we decided pr- prior to this that if we don't, ki- if we don't kill anything on Saturday, 
then we're going to go out together on Sunday. We're going to go out to this spot where he shot the eight point because there were several other bucks out there mm-hmm. that, that were are still around and lots of does and things. And it was going to be a, a decent chance of us being able to get something. Sure. Yep. And uh, the weather had been phenomenal all season long. Like it had been really good. And we went out this last day to the adversity. spot. Yeah, adversity. <laughs> so we went this last day and um, – because I was with Nate, I didn't have permission to go through this guy's property. So we went in the back way. We went in and parked, and then we hiked um, I'd probably two, three miles. To be clear, so it doesn't sound like we're trespassing. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's only 100 yards off the road yes. that is private property. Everything behind it is all Correct. Yeah, it's open. all public So behind. we decided to go in behind and hunt that, oh, that, that, that yes, area. Yes, the public portion of the property and so in order to not trespass that's why we went the long way around exactly so we went around and we hiked in and um went down to this spot where he had seen the first buck and then we went to the spot where he'd seen a couple other deer and we just kind of did our thing and then um didn't see any didn't see any white tails then the weather just decided to turned on oh man snowflakes two inches in diameter seriously it was it was the one day that the weather was like sucky and i'm you know he's switched to percussion cap at this point yes and i am still i'm like okay i set out with a flintlock i'm gonna finish with a flintlock i'm just gonna do it and so i'm being very careful to keep my prison covered and my flint dry and everything as dry as i can possibly keep it underneath my shoulder outside my jacket so there's no condensation or heat build up on the because metal gets cold and then you know if you a lot of people don't know this but if you're using a flint lock you try to cover it with your hand the heat from your hand heats up the metal which causes condensation and then your powder gets wet and so there's all kinds of issues with flint locks that you have to be cautious of so i'm trying to keep it dry but not get it insulated with heat so i'm just kind of keeping it under here without like keeping it closed yeah by under here i mean under my armpit i always forget podcast <laughs> if you're not watching i keep it under here uh keep it you know under my armpit but without keeping my armpit completely closed on it to keep the snowflakes off of it so yeah and and it was it was just like tough it was a mm-hmm. there was a lot of snow it, up on top we decided how much did we decide it snowed it from the morning to the night it was like 10 inches or something oh yeah absolutely yeah it snowed 10 inches and so we're just like just wandering around and we get to the spot we do one last stand and we're like okay well we had seen a couple of does in this one spot earlier in the morning and we're like well they can't they didn't look like they really blew out of the country they kind of stopped and bedded down and so we're like okay well we decide to split up mm-hmm. and if you are if you don't ever split up <laughs> <laughs> so we decide to split up and nate is carrying his gun at this point and i've checked it multiple times yeah. to be clear like the i know the frizzen's dry yeah there's no snowflakes melting down on it or anything like that i'm being super careful yeah and so we decided to split up and basically i'm gonna go around this knob that before we finish this story all the way darren did tell me before we split up he said hey you should probably check your powder i said no it's dry like it's good i've kept it super dry everything's good it looks you know i've been checking on it yeah it's fine yeah it's of course you know this is it's like the perfect storm of just things, <laughs> bad things happening. The perfect storm in a perfect storm. Yes, the perfect storm inside of a perfect storm. <laughs> but I go around this knob and I just, I, I told Nate, I was like, I want to, I want to walk the, the long way because I just, you know, he had been doing a lot of the long walking over the course of our hunt. And so I decided to go the long way and he's going to go the short way and we're going to meet up alongside this fence line mm-hmm. and we're just going to run into each other and go do something else if that doesn't work out. And I go up and I walk along and I walk all the way back up the fence line to where we were before. And I was like, I never ran into him. And I was like, where the heck is he? So I'm wandering up and down looking for him. And I end up calling him. And I said, where are you? And he's like, oh, I'm down here by, you know, by this other spot we'd been earlier. And I was like, okay. So I came, went down and met up with him. And the, the, the sour look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I can't say it. Take me home. Oh, out of man. here. <laughs> it was, it was priceless. Put me out of my misery. <laughs> In the meantime, <laughs> while he's hiking around this way, you know, I waited five minutes on my side of the mountain and uh, then started walking down the fence just real nice and slow, you know. And these three white-tailed does get up, and I'm like, okay, last day. I'm not going to be picky. Doe's fine. I just want some white-tail meat. Yeah. It's my favorite. 
uh, other than antelope, but we won't go there right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they just they just stand up and walk and stop twenty five yards in front of me. Sweet, let's do this. <laughs> You know, it's the sound of the hammer coming back. <laughs> three times. That was four, but three times in actuality. Yeah. I try to fire this thing and the deer leave. Obviously, they're like, oh, what is that clicking? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I look down and my powder looks fine. I, I touch it and it's like... Not Play-Doh. It's more like paste. Uh, yeah, it's more like paste. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like like if you take charcoal paint. and it's mix like it with paint. water. Yeah, yeah like, like black paint. paint. <laughs> and you could just touch it. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it just <laughs> sticks to your fingers. Like, what is it's this? It's kind of like a chocolate chip when you put a chocolate chip in the oven. It holds its shape, but then <laughs> yeah, you touch it, yeah. and it like deforms. Exactly. And it's all yep. Yeah, that's exactly how it was. Yeah, like super oh, frustrating. You gotta be kidding me. And <laughs> so. Okay, fast forward, we're down there talking, and I just, I tell Darren, I said, I am done. Like, the wind has been taken out of my sails. This gun's not going to fire anyway. There's no point for me to be out here right now. Yep. And so I try putting some new powder in, um, try shooting it 8, 9, 10, 12, 25 times. <clears throat> and I can't even get the flint to, to make a spark. Yeah. And actually, later on, when I brought it back to the office to clean it, I still couldn't get it to spark. Really? Cleaned it, couldn't get it to spark still. So I cleaned the frizzen with some oil, mm -hmm. and then sparked like a like brand new. <laughs> Why oil? I was thinking, huh. man, any kind of moisture on there is going to make it not spark. But yeah. yeah. It sparks like a champion now. Probably better even than it did before. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I, I just think it was hilarious. Like the, the one time we split up and I had the percussion at this point and it hadn't been snowing that long. So I think my percussion still would have gone off. Um, but it's like the one time we split up and yeah, we took bets on it later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did take, yeah. So we took bet, but we, ne we never ended up trying until we got back to the truck. But by that time it was just saturated because oh, yeah. it was so snowing so hard. Um, but you know, just the, it was just hilarious. Like the, just the, the look on your face, <laughs> just, just so funny. This when, is how I felt. <laughs> that's how I think that's how we all felt like <laughs> I, I was I was sad because it's just like oh my goodness like it's just a crappy thing to have happen you know Ugh. and then yeah it's just it was just crazy and so that at that point we decided to start heading back you know and um we ended up cutting some like and at this point keep in mind oh my goodness I smacked my microphone it's 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 snowing hard like it's snowing very hard and we are we end up cutting some fresh tracks and we're like this is, it was a big buck and we're like mm -hmm. this is a, a big buck like we could track this thing and and it's like he just passed us yeah like, he only had about a seconds. minute or two before the tracks started getting covered up that's how hard it's snowing so. yeah so it's like he's right here so yeah. we just we take off and we just start tracking this buck and he does a couple loop de loos and like try, tries to trying to lose us trying to throw us off his scent and we track him down and he ends up going down this really steep draw and the funny part is I kind of like look down to check my map, just kind of see where we are in relation to the private property and stuff. And I realized that he crossed right over a spot that we were watching mm -hmm. like an hour before, like yeah. we were sitting there rattling an hour before. So it's like, if we had just stuck it out in that spot, you know, that always happens. Come for a long. but anyways, yeah. Cause I looked down, I was like, <clears throat> right up there is where we were we rattling like an hour ago. Yeah. Um, but so we decided to take off down this ridge. Cause I'm like, okay, this buck's going to bed down somewhere. Cause the weather's horrible and we're going to catch him in his bed. We're going to kill him. And we go down, down, down. And we kind of track him back up and he ends up crossing onto private property. I was like, well, that was, that was fruitless. Um, it was fun though. I mean, we got yeah. to try, got to chase him down. So then from there, a ton of elk later. Yeah. Cause from there we hiked back up the other side of the draw. Cause we kind of had to do that to get back to the truck and ended up seeing, I don't know, probably a bunch of elk. I don't know how many. I had there. to been at least a hundred. We yeah. saw that first group of 25 and then up on the Canyon, they were just, yeah. they just kept going and tons of them, tons yeah. of them up there. And so oh, buck scrapes everywhere. Yeah. And we saw a ton of buck scrapes. Yep. Yeah. But no deer. Cause I, at that point it was just snowing so hard. I'm sure they were kind of like, Headed down they were scenario. out of, they were out of there, but, um, made it back to the, the rig and, um, ended up, I, so I 
shot off and the cap went off on my muzzleloader didn't fire and <laughs> i put another cap on and it did fire but that time it was it was saturated so i was like eh, it's tough to say but to get a double cap i mean they're you're not you're not gonna kill a deer yeah that, that first totally. i mean those caps yep. are pretty loud when you're in the quiet of the woods yeah. i've done that yep. before you sneak up on a deer and pow yeah but the gun doesn't go off and they are out of there mm-hmm. and it was like 75 yards away mm-hmm. and they were gone yeah, you're not getting a, a second chance. Not getting a second cap on there. Unless you got like a lanyard on your neck and you're like, pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't think you can do yeah, it. Yeah, that would still that'd be, that'd be quite a feat to get a, a cap reload that fast. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, especially since sometimes they just smash over the top and you can't get yeah, you gotta messing like, with them to get it off, off of there. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> but that was kind of it for our season. We, mm-hmm. Both of us were kind of like, Fed up with it at that point. Went back to Nate's house and had some hot cocoa and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> warmed up a little bit. Yeah, so sopping wet. Yeah, it was just it was a crazy season. A lot of fun. Um, kind of, kind of that kind of just rings true for all of you know my seasons and your seasons. Kind of played out a little bit differently, even worse than mine. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm done with the flintlock or not yet. I mean, usually when I set out to achieve a goal, I I I, I do it. And I, so I think I will probably give it another shot next year. Um, yeah. I fully intend to shoot something with a flintlock at some point, but yeah. I don't think, I don't think I've, I don't think I've leveled up enough to the, <laughs> <laughs> to where I feel, to where I'm like, I can use a flintlock, you know, I think I'll spend a little more time at the range with, with it this year too. Yeah. And mess around with it and see kind of the ins and outs and the quirks and, mm-hmm. You know, like I said, I'm just not a huge fan. Of, there's so much better technology than round ball, obviously. It's like yeah. the original technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, you know, I've had a ton of deer get away in the past with round ball that I know were excellent shots. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I'm just not a big fan of that. But it is definitely, there's something to be said about just going full traditional. Mm-hmm. Um, if you know, you're going to do it with the flintlock, that's kind of what you got to do. Yeah, yeah and I fully like, plan on line. doing it with a, I've done it, I've killed a ton of deer with a, a percussion cap so mm. it's not even on my list anymore but um you know I, I fully plan on doing a longbow at some point especially with Oregon going to their new regulations um that's almost a guaranteed tag every year for third choice oh really yeah I didn't know about that oh yeah longbow yeah you can huh. do traditional it's longbow recurve whatever hmm. um I think there's other bows out there too that you can use other than fascinating yeah, yeah. so I'm gonna put in for that third choice every single year I'll do We'll have to talk about that more later. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, if you want to hunt every year, yeah, why not? Yeah, I think that's kind of the deal with the eagle cap muzzleloader tag too. Is they hand, they only like fifty people put in for it. You can hunt all of the wilderness area there, mm-hmm. and they give out like fifty five tags. Yeah, so I think I might do that second choice or something next year. Yeah. Um, that just kind of leads us into our, the last thing I really want to talk about is what are our plans for next year? You know, what are we planning to do? Cause that, cause this, se- this whitetail season wraps up our hunting seasons mm-hmm. for 2022. Other um, than coyote and other than coyote cougar. hunting, which I don't even know if I'm going to get to do any coyote hunting this year. Uh, probably January before I start mm-hmm. coyote hunting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, I think next year. So next year, my plan is I, I'm probably, I'm probably going to, ditch the muzzleloader during bear season mm-hmm. i think bear season i'm just oh, gonna yeah, use my you're six trying five. to do all the all the tags with the muzzleloader this year yep. and i i w- will see i might i might i, I eventually want to shoot a bear with the muzzleloader but i next year i just really want to shoot a bear mm-hmm. so i think i'm gonna yeah. you know not not do that i'm gonna use my six five for i could have shot season. a bear with muzzleloader this year you could have <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep um but uh then from from there i think i'm gonna do I, I have zero elk points now, so I think I'm probably going to put in for something first choice and then do the Eagle Cap muzzleloader tag second choice and maybe this longbow thing third choice. If <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's kind of my plan too. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll put in for normal archery. Um, I've toyed around with the idea of the muzzleloader tag for second choice, but I really just love hunting the, the rut. Yeah. So I it's probably special. will just go. Well, it's this. It's the second or third week of October. So they could. It's in between deer and and elk season for rifle. So mm-hmm. they could st- definitely still be rutting. That's they true. were rutting at that time this year. Oh, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, maybe just depends on on the year. Yeah, depends on the year. Hopefully, hopefully next year is not like this year. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> that's bad. That was rough. Everything was so late this year. Yeah, so rough. 
But yet the snow was early. Yeah, yeah super weird. It's because we got because all of our fall moisture came later in the year mm-hmm. when it was colder, and so mm-hmm. the snow came early. So it's like now it was like everything was late except for the winter, which came early. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was super bizarre. Well, early in retrospect, I mean, this is you know growing up in Eastern Oregon, this is usually when we got our winters. Yeah, so since ever since I've been here, years. like January, February is usually yep. when the winter sets in. Yeah. yeah, and when I was growing up as a kid, is October. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, next year too i don't know how many an- do you have any oregon antelope points yeah you do how many do you have five five yeah maybe you consider Another 20 years i'll get one well here's <laughs> hear me out here there there's a muzzleloader antelope tag for um i can't remember the unit but it's only like five six points to draw hmm. and from people that i've talked to that have hunted it you set up a blind you sit on water and you wait for an antelope to show up and you shoot one it sounds like most close range antelope hunting exactly and you could spot and stalk it but that would be even harder than (laughs) whitetail that would be good luck like all of the spot and stalk people i've seen that do it with like bows they're just belly crawling the entire time yeah or they have the 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 cow decoy or something um but i think i'm gonna put in for that this year i really want to try and i think (laughs) it'd be fun you know and it's like if if i don't kill one of those i'll just go to wyoming muzzleloader rules yeah yeah I'll, I'll just go to wyoming and shoot one you know if i if i don't kill one i still plan on going to wyoming i don't think i'm gonna go this year i was originally planning on going this year but i think with school i'm probably gonna wait till after school and go then yeah um, i think i'm gonna go for sure you think you're for sure gonna antelope go? yeah okay i've um, been talking about it for five years and it i'm always waiting on someone you know yeah. either my dad or or my brother and we always make these grand plans and we're going to go I'm like you know what I'm just going to go alone if nobody wants to go I'm yeah. I'm not going to wait any longer I'm yeah sick of waiting it's tough because theirs is in October if it was in August I would go this year because it's during the summer mm-hmm. but theirs is in October so it's like my goodness so late yeah. Um, so yeah I think that's kind of my plan for, for hunting next year so yeah I already got my uh, whitetail Idaho tag too for center for fire so. oh you did yeah. yeah you can buy it already you have to Oh really? Yeah, huh. uh, it's January first, or I mean December first. Oh really? You have to buy it. Yep. Oh well. Otherwise I guess they run out of tags. I was considering doing that, but it's too late. So <laughs> no, you can still get it. It's just people do it on December first to make sure they get it. There's oh, probably still tags left. Would be my guess. Yeah. But we always just go January one or December one. Man, I keep saying January one. <laughs> December first, so that we for sure get a tag. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. The elk tags, one hundred percent guaranteed, are already gone. Mm-hmm. But the deer tags, there's probably still some left. So the elk tag, like the muzzleloader elk tag, it's just an elk tag. No, I'm talking about the muzzleloader. The muzzleloader lottery. Oh, you're talking about the archery ones. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I'm talking about the lottery one. Yeah. So in <clears throat> Idaho, you just buy an archery tag for elk. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what unit, just general season yeah. archery. Or it's just one elk tag, good for any unit, all seasons, mm-hmm. general season. Got so, it. Same thing. I got a deer tag. Good for all deer in any unit. Got it. But I choose unit 14. So. Unit 14. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, I think let's call it quits on this podcast. Yeah. A little off topic on the center fire stuff. But yeah, I think those we, are our plans for yeah, next year. I, I think it's, you know, good plans, good times. Glad we were able to emotionally process everything that happened. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are able to process it with us. Um, if you Thanks guys, for being on this thing here. <laughs> <laughs> um, let us know what you guys did, how your seasons went in the comments below. Send let us, us some pictures. Send us some stinking pictures on Instagram. <laughs> and let us know what you guys plan to do next year for hunting as well. Um, and also, feel free to send us like memes like Nate and I send to each other. Yeah, That'd be absolutely. awesome. My, my Instagram's uh, Darren Binder one Yours is Savage Outdoor Adventures, Savage underscore Outdoor Savage or underscore Adventures. So yes, with an S, Adventures. Don't yes. do adventure. That's his brother. That's long, <laughs> long story behind that. <laughs> Copycat. Um, so yeah, we are gonna uh, close the book on this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening, um, and we will see you in the next episode. Mm-hmm.